Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. I'm your host, Rick the Barkeep, bringing you podcast 120 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. So it's become official now, the, the word is out there, it's been announced uh, through various outlets, but now Power Rangers 3 has a director, uh, a man by the name of Dean Israelite. Now, I, I have mixed feelings about the hiring of Mr. Israelite to be the director of Power Rangers, and it's nothing against him personally. The issues I have really have to go ahead and do with the commitment that Saban Films and Lionsgate has to making this Power Rangers movie a good movie. And what do I mean by that? First of all, let's talk about Mr. Israelite. Now, I have no problem with him, really, whatsoever. He's a director, he's you know trying to make his mark on Hollywood, but the thing is, he doesn't really have a lot of credits behind him. He's done a couple of short films, he's done a, a television show, and most prolifically, he's done the film Project Almanac, which, I have not seen because I tried to stay away from the poison that is Michael Bay. Um, but that that's his big directorial feature debut, basically. That is the film that supposedly is kind of what got him the, this job on Power Rangers. Now, again, I have not seen the film Project Almanac, but the word is the movie was bad. I mean, it was released in January, so what, what were you guys expecting, you know? Uh, never see a film that is released in January. That is Hollywood's dumping ground for crap. That 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 is the truth of the matter. So I find it curious that the, the Saban brands and Lionsgate, they say, let's have this guy who's only done one feature film, which, by the way, is a found footage movie, a film that bombed, that nobody liked, and has only worked on, you know, a few shorts and one television show. This is the guy we're going to he uh, head our tentpole project, our multi-million dollar Power Ranger film, you know, for a franchise that's been around for, you know, tw over 20 years. This is the man that we want. And I don't understand that decision, really. And because I don't understand that decision, it makes me question the commitment that, again, Saban Brands and everybody has to making this a good movie. Now, I will also preface this by saying that there are many times where we get a young up-and-coming director or a no-name to go ahead and direct something where, you know, we don't know what they're going to go ahead and do. I mean, I've referenced this before, but look at Jaws. That was Spielberg's uh, directorial debut. I mean, technically, Duel was, but Jaws was where he's given that, that big budget to make a Hollywood blockbuster, as it were. Turned out great for him. But Jaws was not a, a franchise film at the time. It wasn't based on anything that was pre-existing except uh, uh, I think there was a book and, and real life incidences. But you get my point. Th the thing is, is that they, they're going into this film, giving this massive franchise to somebody who is still, again, up and coming within Hollywood that I don't think has fully proven himself. And again, while there are instances, while that may not be the case, I just want to know why the, the company didn't go for somebody who is a bigger name, somebody who is uh, who does have a few films under his belt, somebody who uh, has been through the process multiple times and all that. Again, nothing wrong with up-and-coming directors, but it just seems if you're going to handle this franchise, you're going to reboot the Power Rangers and bring them into the mainstream media, why aren't you getting somebody who, uh, who, who, can, who can do that? And let me give a couple examples. I mean, with the X-Men franchise, who did they get to go ahead and direct that? Brian Singer, you know, somebody who was well-established, did some good films, and they got a pre-existing uh, property turned into a, a film franchise, and he's done great at it when he is actually involved with the product. Let's take a look at... Um, uh, let's see, what's the other uh, Spider-Man films? Who they get uh, as their director? Sam Raimi, who's someone who is pre-established, who knew what he was doing, and of course, you know, made uh, two and a half uh, good films, however you want to go ahead uh, and look at that. The, the point I'm getting to, and, and look at Avengers, Joss Whedon, again, somebody who is well-established going into this franchise. These three superhero franchises, which ironically are all Marvel films, um, got somebody who knew what they were doing, were well-established, and could make them a, a good feature. Even take a look at the the Batman trilogy. You got you know Tim uh, Tim Burton, 
uh, he he was established at the time. He did Batman. He did some good films at that time. Um, then you have the Nolan trilogy, and Nolan was, again, well-established for films like Memento prior to doing that. The point that I'm getting at is that all these major franchi- superhero franchises had good directors with them. Now, you do get the occasional film like Guardians of the Galaxy, where you get James Gunn, who did Scooby-Doo, you know, but you did get a good product out of that. And I am hoping that he is, that the Mr. Israelite is like James Gunn, you know, that I am giving him too little credit and he is going to make an amazing feature for us. But again, it's not really about Israelite. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be a competent director. And the thing is, he's a fan of the franchise. That's why I've read in a lot of articles that he loves the franchise. And I do think that's got to be, one of the most important factors going into this is that he has to not only like Power Rangers, but he has to love Power Rangers, I think, to do it justice. As we previously established, the Power slash Ranger uh, quote-unquote fan film by Mr. Khan, he did not care for Power Rangers at all, and that's why we got a piece of crap um, short film. But... In this case, he, uh, you know, Mr. Israelite says he likes the likes the franchise, so I think he's going to do justice. And again, I just hope that he is catching up on his Power Rangers history as we speak. That he is watching all the episodes and the movies and the commentaries and just figuring out what is Power Rangers. But again, let's talk about the the main focus here with the studio. I mean, why didn't the studio actually go after a, an A list director? Why didn't they try to get somebody big? I mean. You know, it's unlikely they would get somebody like Josh Whedon or Quentin Tarantino or, or big names like that. You know, heck, I would have been fine with Peter Jackson. I think he would have probably been a good choice. But again, that's, you know, a dream team kind of list. I mean, anybody that comes up, says, hey, I have an idea for a movie. I think this director would be good for it. Well, again, that's a fantasy a lot of times, and that's just not the reality of it. So the reality is they didn't get an A-list director, but the question is, could they get an A-list director? I'm sure if they could, if they really wanted, they could. And I am curious about where Mr. Rizalek falls in the pecking order. Was he their first choice, second, 75th? Uh, It's just kind of interesting to know. But again, I'm just really kind of confused on what the company is doing here. Now, they did pin some good writers uh, who have done superhero films in the past, so I give them credit for that. Uh, they originally got Robert Orsi to produce the film, which I thought was a horrible idea. They eventually He eventually left the pro- uh, pro- uh, project on his own accord. So that's fine. Go mess up whatever franchise you want to go ahead and do over there. And again, they hire a kind of a no-name director. So it's really kind of a mixed bag on, on what they're doing right here. I'm not even really sure, um, again, what they're kind of thinking. But are they really going into this process saying it's a well-established franchise, has films, uh, f- excuse me, fans all over the world, is adapted from another culture? And, you know, that's something I also need to think about, too, is also marketing towards Japan, I think, because of the source material. But that's another story altogether. And we're going to hire two, you know, two good writers who have done superhero films in the past. Um, and we're going to hire a director who hasn't really done anything. I mean, unless they see something special in this guy. I mean, this guy could be a Nicholas Meyer. And I hope he is a Nicholas Meyer. I hope he is a James Gunn, you know, that did one really bad film. And now is going to do an amazing film that works well at the box office and reignites uh, the franchise for, for people in, in the culture. That's what I want to go ahead and see. But again, what type of commitment does Saban Brands ha- have to this in, again, tagging somebody who this will only be his second major motion picture? And, and you know, the thing is, this guy worked under Michael Bay, so I'm just hoping none of the Bayisms have rubbed off of him because, you know, there are going to be explosions of Power Rangers. I get that. But there's got to be something between Kalish explosions and Michael Bay explosions where we can all... You know, we can all be happy. Uh, I, you know, I want to see see that at some, uh, somewhere. But again, I hope the Michael Bay stuff doesn't rub off on him uh, at all here. So I know I, I'm just kind of going on and on stuff, but here's here's the ultimate thing uh, that I want to leave you guys with. I, I, again, I don't know what type of uh, ca- uh, choice this is to hire him as a director, but I really want to see... You know, what's going to happen next in the process? Now that they got a director, uh, obviously they have a script done. Who are they going to start casting? Are they going to, you know, because that's going to be a big thing too. You know, are they going to get the right actors for the role? Are they just going to get people popular? Are they going to pull in? Because again, let's go with Guardians of the Galaxy real quick, just as an example. 
James Gunn went in there again. Two bad, uh, two bad movies under his belt, including Scooby Doo, um, and they went in there, hired a bunch of you know. I mean, who 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 knew any of the a lot of these people beforehand? A lot of them haven't made an A list status yet, but they got Glenn Close in the film, John C. Riley, uh, Vin Diesel for whatever he's worth, he was in it too. Uh, I mean, they got some big celebrities in there and a lot of no names uh, for these roles. So. And again, even in, look at X Men: Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, um, uh, dang, I'm uh, Ian McKellen. I mean, you got some amazing people in that film. Are they going to take the same attitude to casting within Power Rangers, where they are going to get you know some big stars, uh, some stars that are up and coming, stars that are decent, all that? Because I don't want this to turn into some sort of Hannah Montana teen bop film whatever and stuff like that because the moment that they cast a 13 year old actress you know to play Kimberly that I, I may just be done with the whole thing but uh, we'll see so again I just kind of leave you guys just consider the fact what they've done what's that going to mean in the long run once we actually get to 2016 we actually see a finished product you know I I, I will if it's really good and I've made mistakes here uh, on again criticizing the company and all that then then i will definitely apologize for that but right now i'm just really wary kind of going in because remember it was this time last year we just got the announcement of the film and now they're just hiring a director with a release date of summer of next year so that's like 13 14 months that they got to to, to start working on this film and i just i just really hope they're on the right track so all right, that's all I really ha have to, to go ahead and say. I mean, what do you guys think? What's your opinion on this? Uh, is it going to be good? Is, is this a bad decision? Just whatever you guys think, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys for listening. Have a good evening, and the tavern is now closed.